Hey, Remar Nurses, we are live and we are about to talk about the NCLEX topic, myasthenia gravis. We're going to do some NCLEX questions on it tonight as well. This is our Winning Wednesday NCLEX review right here. Hi, if it's your first time joining me, my name is Regina Callion. I am happy to be here with you. I've been a nursing educator now for over 12 years, helping thousands of nursing students pass the NCLEX. So you are in the right place if you are planning to get your nursing license in 2023. Oh my goodness, guys. And so since you're nurses, you probably can help and you probably can tell me what is going on with my daughter today. So last night she started complaining of a sore throat. And when I looked at the back of her throat, I saw these white patches, right? <laughs> white patches on the back of her throat. And I said to myself, okay, you'll go to the doctors in the morning. And by the time the morning came, she was nauseated. She couldn't sit up. She was throwing up. And I was just like, what is going on? I didn't know, because uh, you guys know we were in Aruba last week for my birthday. Thank you guys so much for all the birthday wishes. And so our oldest came back. We literally have been home for just two days. And so yesterday she had the sore throat, white patches on the back of her throat, but then she was like throwing up constantly and she couldn't sit still. She laid down. Even when I took her to the doctor, she could hardly sit up for him to even listen to her lungs or anything like that. And he looked at the back of her throat and he was like, oh, it's nasty in here. It's so nasty. And I was like, is it COVID? Because I was thinking, why is she so nauseated? Why is she so dizzy? Um, she was saying she had chills and it was not COVID. It was strep throat. And so just as I was preparing to go live, she started having the symptoms of strep throat again. I did not know strep throat could be so bad, but my nine-year-old is suffering right now in a, in a, in a, in a crazy way. So um, I just settled her and I said, I'm going to do my Astina Gravis with the Remar nurses and then I'll be back with you. And she said, okay, mommy, I'll be okay. Okay. So um, I am in dear, 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 dearly. My heart is with her and I'm going to deliver this winning Wednesday to you guys to help you pass your NCLEX. And then I'm going back to being a mama. So we are talking about myasthenia gravis, myasthenia gravis. And this topic, I see some of you guys talking about quick facts. I am so ashamed to show this quick facts, guys. Um, this is the quick facts book that I have right now. And if you have quick facts, and it's the only Remar product that you have, we do talk about myasthenia gravis in this quick facts, but I wanted to develop it more to the Remar nurses about this part of myasthenia gravis because it will help them for NCLEX. So I'll be doing that on tonight with you guys. So we're going to get into it. Also, if you have the quick facts book, you got it on Amazon or you got it from my website, remarnurse.com. We still have this going on, which is the complete set for the V2. And it's just $89 still, guys. It's just $89. Now, if you have quick facts already, that price goes down to even lower to $69, $69. So still a great, great, great value for your NCLEX review, NCLEX review. Okay, so now you guys have 20 seconds to get the kids out the room, clear out everything because we are going to study. We are going to study. These small steps that you take will be great distances very soon. So we'll start with the small steps, which is Winning Wednesday. So myasthenia gravis, when we talk about this condition, remember that it is in fact an autoimmune disease. So whenever we see autoimmune, we are thinking that the body is what to itself? The body is an enemy. It is attacking its own self. And particularly the immune system mistakenly begins to attack its own body tissues. Oh my goodness. So in myasthenia gravis, I'll say M MG, the hallmark is that muscle weakness occurs and 
specifically it worsens after periods of activity mm -hmm. and it will improve after periods of rest okay after periods of rest so when you look at the term myasthenia gravis you can learn a lot by just the name and so gravis there means it's a grave condition and we know my means muscle so it is a grave muscle weakness okay it's a grave muscle weakness and when we talk about the muscles that are involved we're talking about the skeletal muscles so the skeletal muscles are going to be the muscles that you're able to control for movement so lifting up your arms right your diaphragm you can control your diaphragm you can control if you want to breathe fast or if you want to breathe slow so if we talk about a condition that affects your ability to control your diaphragm what kind of emergency could this patient have this patient could have respiratory emergencies so myasthenia gravis is a serious condition and that's why it's on the NCLEX exam okay all right, so I hope we got the name. We're starting with our definition. Definitions, if we understand them, they will make us more confident and we will be able to uh, continue to build upon the simple definitions. This is, a, this is also another reason why I tell you guys, don't just jump into question banks and start doing questions about conditions. Start first with this step, which is reviewing the condition, reviewing the terminologies, right? So when we talk about an etiology, all right, an etiology, and we're not going to get too deep in this, but just let me read it to you. Let me read it to you in your hearing. Myasthenia gravis is caused by an error in how nerve signals are transmitted to muscles. So this is a neuromuscular disease. So it is caused in an error in how nerve signals are transmitted to muscles. And it occurs when communication between the nerve and muscle is interrupted at the neuromuscular junction, which simply means the place where nerve cells connect to the muscles, where nerve cells connect to the muscles, all right? And so who is at risk? This is very important. Who is at risk? Both men and women can get myasthenia gravis and it, it occurs all across different racial lines and ethnic groups. It most commonly impacts young adult females. So females under 40 and older males over 60. Isn't that interesting? So younger females or older males, okay? but it can occur at any age during childhood, okay? So are we still good? Are, we, are, are you having any questions class tonight about this topic? I am expecting you guys to be able to answer the questions at the end of this flawlessly, okay? All right, now, when you talk about myasthenia gravis, we understand that this is a muscular, a neuromuscular condition. So we expect some muscle weakness. But what does that look like? In your minds now, can you think about, can you think about um, some, some symptoms that you would expect? All right, before I show you, before I show you, I want you to think about what that neuromuscular weakness will present as. All right, this is kind of getting you to critically think. So we have weakness of the eye muscles. Oh my goodness, weakness of the eye muscles. This is ocular myasthenia, very common. And so what you're gonna see is the drooping of one or both eyelids, okay, ptosis. You're also gonna see double or blurry vision in your patient. I like that difficulty walking. Some people are putting it on the comments. Excellent job. Changes in facial expression because the muscles are weak. 
difficulty swallowing, shortness of breath. So is this a serious condition? Yes, it can be. Okay. Um, impaired speech, weakness in the arms, hands, fingers, legs, and neck. Beautiful comments on the screen. And so sometimes we, we have a range of symptoms with myasthenia gravis and it can go from just, you know, a little fatigue with activity, but all the way up until respiratory failure, which is an immediate medical emergency. So if your patient is having some of these signs, you get a, a, a female and she comes in and she's, you know, 25 years old, but tells you that her eyes get really tired. You know, she's having a hard time keeping her eyes open. We, we have to do some diagnosis. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, let's start with a physical and a neurological examination. Diagnosis, that's how we're going to do it. A physical and neurological examination. Muscle strength and tone, coordination, looking at the sense of touch. And definitely, definitely any, any impaired eye movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Androphonium test. Now, this is a test specifically for um, eye muscle weakness. And what happens is with androphonium, it, it, it is injected. And what it will do is it will help to block the breakdown of the acetylcholine. And so the acetylcholine is what is being attacked in myasthenia gravis. And so sometimes when we're in nursing school, the, the instructor will use the term, you know, acetylcholinesterase or acetylcholine or acetylcholine inhibitors, right? And we don't really know how it applies, but acetylcholine is very, it is very important to muscle strength. And so with the androphonium test, the, the androphonium is injected and it will help the patient to regain their strength because it is allowing acetylcholine to last a little bit longer, okay? Also, a blood test will, a blood test, people who have, um, living with myasthenia gravis may have abnormally elevated levels of the acetylcholine, um, acetylcholine receptor antibodies. And so remember, this is an autoimmune disease. So if you have, antibodies against acetylcholine, then you know, hey, the body is attacking itself, which it should not be doing because acetylcholine is okay for the body to have. All right. Also, I'm going to get into some electrodiagnosis. Um, we're going to talk about the diagnostic images and the pulmonary function test. Okay. All right. So the the electrodiagnostics, this is really interesting. And um, this is when we are asking for a nerve impulse or a nerve stimulation to be repeated. Okay. And you can actually, honestly, you can do this with um, the electromagnetic test if you want to, but any kind of repetitive movement is going to demonstrate muscle fatigue after a while. So if you ask the patient with myasthenia gravis to just do this, just lift up their arm 20 times, you'll see that after a certain amount of times, their arm is going to get weaker and weaker. Because remember with myasthenia gravis, that connection from the nerve to the muscle is, is disrupted. So they're not going to be able to do it. Or what doctors will do is tell their patient to just blink, just blink, because blinking is a controlled activity, right? It's subconscious, but you can also control it. So, and remember with myasthenia gravis, we have what? We have eye, we have eye changes. 
And so after a while, the patient's not going to be able to open their eyes. Their eyes are going to be closed, right? They're not going to be able to open it because it takes muscle strength to be able to open your eyes too, all right? So we're talking about how we can tell if a patient has myasthenia gravis. And you guys are learning a lot about this topic tonight. I think after this lecture, you can answer any NCLEX question that you'll get on the exam. The diagnostic tests are going to be a, a CT or an MRI that may help um, to determine if you, if you have a thigh, thymoma, which is, um, which is the, the thymus, right? And you have a growth on your thymus gland. Pulmonary function testing measures the breathing strength of the patient and we want to know their respiratory capacity because we know with myasthenia gravis, if you have respiratory failure, it can lead to a myasthenic crisis. So if this is the case and your patient has it, how are we going to treat it? What Just by learning uh, the few facts that we had tonight, what, what is the medication going to be focused on. If you had a patient with myasthenia gravis, what kind of medications are going to help this patient? Put the comments on the screen. I like to read them. Okay. I like to read them. I know I have nurses literally from all over the planet watching tonight, but we're talking about myasthenia gravis. And I'm asking you, I'm not asking you to name medications. I'm asking you to consider the symptoms of your patient, consider the, uh, the pathophysiology of myasthenia gravis, and then tell me what do we want our medications to focus on? Mm. Yeah. Muscle. Okay. So I'm, I'm seeing we may want our patients to focus on the muscles, not so much muscle, um, not so much muscle relaxers, we don't want the muscles to be more relaxed. We want them to be strengthened. We want them to have some strength. Um, maybe some antidepressants. That 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 may that may be relevant to the patient. Oh, plasmapheresis. I like that term. I like that term. Actually, that's a very important term in your Quick Facts book. We have a whole section on plasmapheresis. It's a definitely, a definite, um, when you think of plasmapheresis, you definitely want to think of myasthenia gravis because it applies to that. Uh, acetylcholine, gabapentin, good job. Okay, everybody, excellent job. That's what we mean. We show up, your attention, your presence is required in class. And these little things, just like commenting, engaging in the lecture is going to help you greatly when you get this kind of questional NCLEX. All right, so very good. You guys got it. We're going to do some cholinesterase inhibitors because remember, it is the breaking down of acetylcholine, acetylcholine that is causing our muscle weakness. So you have drugs, and this is something that you do want to know. This is a this is a medication that you guys can know and remember. Neostagmine. This is a medication that is going to be helpful for myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis. All right. Um, also, these are the medications that I want you guys to know specifically. Immunosuppressive medications. Why immunosuppressive? Because immunosuppressive is going to suppress the what? Tell me what, tell me what immunosuppressive, tell me what your prednisone, right, is going to do your, your steroids. What are they going to do? I took it off the screen because I wanted you guys to think about it. Why would we give the client with myasthenia gravis a steroid? What's going to be the, mm, what's going to be the benefit to that patient? Because we know steroids come with their own complications, so if you're giving a patient a steroid, there needs to be a very good reason because steroids can cause you to have um, other medical conditions. So 
we're giving the steroids. Um, so I see a lot of people saying to reduce the inflammation. The problem here is, uh, mm, well, I, I know what you're, I know where you're going with that, where, where you're saying reduce the inflammation. Um, but it's not so much the inflammation I want you to be, I want you to be thinking about. With myasthenia gravis, it's the antibodies. It's the antibodies, okay? So it's going to suppress the immune system so that it doesn't produce the antibodies that is that is attacking, all right? Okay, so um, again, it's going to improve muscle strength by suppressing the production of the abnormal antibodies. And then complement inhibitors, uh, this is just the idea that they're uh, from an... A, a, how can I say this from a like cellular pathway, I guess when I look this up, it helps to, it helps to inhibit the immune response in the production and destruction of, you know, the overactive antibodies, but there, there's not a specific drug name that you need to know for NCLEX. So the two drugs that I want you to know are the neostagmine, and then also you can know prednisone or immunosuppressive therapies uh, for the antibody suppression. Okay, cool. The thymectomy, these are also um, more like surgical treatments or procedures as opposed to just medicine. So thy uh, thymectomy is a surgical operation to remove the thymus, okay? And the thymus gland, does anybody know what the thymus gland is um, going to be responsible for? Put it on the screen. Um, I need somebody to put that on the screen in the comments. Because I have here thymectomy, but what does the thymus gland do? Okay, because the thymectomy is removing the thymus gland. So I'm going to read the comments that people put on the screen. You are contributing to the studying process on tonight. Plasmapheresis. Okay, this is this is the treatment that I want you to be aware of. Plasmapheresis, and it's a procedure in which a machine is used to remove harmful antibodies in plasma and, and replaces them with good plasma or a plasma substitute. So I'm actually looking for it in Quick Facts because it was one of the topics that I added to the five-star version. And, I, um, and it's very important. So we talked about here, what does the thymus do? Produce hormones producing T lymphocytes, okay, white blood cells, okay. So we see that the thymus gland is, is a, plays a huge part in the antibody production, right? And so we know that if we remove the thymus, then the patient won't be able to have the same immune response. I want to look at the, ah, can you guys see it? Probably not. This is plasmapheresis and quick facts. So I'm just going to read plasmapheresis if you guys don't mind. Um, so this is the quick facts for plasmapheresis. What is plasmapheresis? Plasmapheresis is the removing antibodies that attack the uh, immune system from a client's plasma. What kind of patients need this treatment? Okay, these are the type of patients that need plasmapheresis. Clients with lupus. Makes sense. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. Clients with multiple sclerosis. Yes, we could be talking about multiple sclerosis. We're going to get the same kind of things. Guillain Barre syndrome. You need to know about Guillain Barre. Myasthenia gravis is one that I'm um, putting in there and other uh, autoimmune diseases. All right. And then it says, um, when plasma is removed, what is it replaced with? So when plasma is removed from the body during plasmapheresis, it is replaced with sal saline or albumin. Okay. Um, during plasmapheresis, is just the plasma removed? 
What do you guys think? All right. And this is how Quick Facts helps you because you can ask, I can't, you can't see it. You can ask yourself the questions on one side and then think if you know the answers on the other. So during plasmapheresis, is only plasma removed from the body? No, whole blood is removed. Then the plasma is separated. How long does a plasma exchange take? One to three hours. So it's something like dialysis, right? It's kind of in the, in the mind of dialysis. And what are the potential complications of plasmapheresis? Well, if you're removing whole blood, your patient is going to have issues perhaps with hypotension, hypotension. All right, so that's the quick facts on plasmapheresis. Let's get back into it. Now, intravenous immunoglobulin, this is a highly concentrated injection of... Um, well, let me say this. It works by binding to the antibodies that causes myasthenia gravis and removing them from circulation. That's all. Okay. Um, so it works by binding to the antibodies and then removing them from circulation, removing them from circulation. So our nursing responsibilities, our nursing responsibilities, we need to monitor our patient's vital signs. We need to monitor their respiratory status and very importantly, ask them to cough. Can your patient with myasthenia gravis cough and deep breathe? That is so important. What is the importance of coughing as a nurse, um, as a mother? Um, if, my, if my kids are uh, eating something and they begin to cough and say, Oh, mom, I'm, I'm choking. I'm choking. <clears throat> I just calmly look at them and I say, if you're coughing, you're not choking. If you're talking, you're not choking. Like, right. If your patient cannot produce a cough, that means that they have no muscle strength. Their respiratory strength is done. All right. Because coughing means you have an open airway. It means your airway is opening. When your airway is closed, you can't cough, you can't talk, you can't swallow. So it's good. It is good when your kids are coughing up water, like you want them to be coughing, okay? All right. Um, also, monitor for respiratory failure. Monitor suctioning and have emergency equipment at the bedside because the myasthenic crisis is, it can come on very fast and it is an, an exacerbation that takes an emergency. Monitor speech and swallowing, swallowing abilities to prevent aspiration. Good, 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 good. Also encourage the client to sit down when eating. And, and this is also because we know that eating can also take a lot of activity out of you. And so when a client is in a resting state, that also helps. Monitor for a myasthenic and cholinergic crisis, administer medications as prescribed, and instruct the client to wear a medic alert bracelet. All right. Okay. So now that we've gone over the content, we are ready for the question. So here we go. Remar nurses. First question is this. Mrs. Carlos, and by the way, after this review, I'm expecting at least four out of five. So if you got a four out of five, all right, here we go. Ms. Carlos is suspected to have myasthenia gravis. Which of the following findings should the nurse expect? Number one, weakness of the eye muscles. Two, unexpected weight loss. Three, black tarry stool. Four, reddish orange urine. Uh, let's say if you guys... We are expecting flawlessly. You guys are answering, of course, it is going to be number one. Absolutely, number one. Weakness of the eye muscles. In myasthenia gravis, the immune system attacks and interrupts the connection between nerve and muscle. It's a neuromuscular disease. The following symptoms are weakness of the eye muscles, drooping of the eyelids, blurred or double vision, 
changes in facial expression, difficulty swallowing, impaired speech, all the things we went over in the beginning, um, and weakness in the arms, hands, fingers, legs, and neck. Okay. Next question is this. Mrs. Cannon, 32 years old, is experiencing muscle weakness that worsens after periods of activity and improves after periods of rest for three weeks now. The healthcare provider orders diagnostic tests to confirm this condition. Which test are we gonna use? Are we gonna use a urine culture, chest X-ray, indrophonium test, fern test, Ah, I would say it, you guys, you learned something new tonight. I'm so happy you showed up today. Okay. Correct answer is going to be number three. You got it. Add this one to your correct column. Remember to diagnose Mycenae Gravis. We use endrophonium test and it is going to be an injection that is going to strengthen the endrophonium chloride that's going to strength, strengthen the muscle weakness in the eye. And the reason why is because that acetylcholine that is being broken down is going to be able to hang out a little longer, hang out a little longer. Question number three, which among the following is considered a vulnerable and high risk client for myasthenia gravis? Is it number one, less than 40 years of age? Okay. Number two, less than 10 years of age. Three, infants or four, oh, travelers. Travelers, travelers, travelers. Who is considered a vulnerable and high-risk client for myasthenia gravis? Welcome if you're just joining me. My name is Regina Callion. We do a free NCLEX review every Wednesday night. We call it Winning Wednesday. And tonight's topic was myasthenia gravis. Correct answer is under 40 years of age because we know that in myasthenia gravis, even though it affects both male and females and occurs across all racial and ethnic groups, it commonly impacts young adult females under 40 and older males over 60. Mm -hmm. okay. Question number four, which amongst the medications will the healthcare provider anticipate to order for clients with myasthenia gravis? Number one, remdesivir. Two, azithromycin. Three, neostagmine. Or four, metformin. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. The correct answer is the one that is going to be slowing down the breakdown of acetylcholine, okay, acetylcholine at that neuromuscular junction. So which one is going to affect acetylcholine? That is going to be number three the neostagmine. And so it is a cholinesterase inhibitor used in the treatment of myasthenia gravis and reverses the effect of muscle relaxants. So we would never for NCLEX pick muscle relaxants for a client with myasthenia gravis. Remember that. It slows down the breakdown of the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Question number five is this. Okay. One of the medications used to treat myasthenia gravis are immunosuppressive drugs such as, number one, prednisone, two, cephalosporins, three, aminoglycosides, four, antivirals. What sayeth you? Hey, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And I'm saying I got it because I was able to clearly explain this topic to you guys tonight for you to receive it and become very proficient in understanding the topic. 
So I'm taking a little bit of the credit tonight for these beautiful answers. The correct one is indeed the immunosuppressive drug to improve muscle strength is prednisone, okay? Suppressing the production of abnormal antibodies by suppressing the immune, the body's immune system that stops the, um, the body from damaging that neuromuscular junction. And you got to know prednisone. The other, the other medications, azathioprine, myofenolate, mofetil, right? These are all as well um, immunosuppressives, but the prednisone is going to be the most common one for your NCLEX exam. How many people are glad they showed up and learned about myasthenia gravis and now you can explain it and when you see it on NCLEX, you'll feel so much better about it, okay? And that is the whole goal of winning the week because there were there were many people that needed to be here tonight, but you showed up. You showed up. And so definitely your sacrifices today are going to pay off big when you're in front of the NCLEX and you're like, give me more, give me more about myasthenia gravis because I studied that one and I know it. So give yourselves a round of applause. I'm seeing so many five out of fives uh, tonight, which means that we are doing something right. You and me, we're doing it right. We make a good team. We make a good team. So thank you guys so much for studying with me. Your time I value it. I know it's very, I know it's very, very important. And so I thank you guys so much for showing up to class. As always, I will be here. Also, if you want to text me directly, you can do so at 855-696. Text the word NCLEX, okay? 855-696-0132. And if you want to keep on studying, you can get inside of my V2, the NCLEX review right now, it is just $89 for you. I'm giving it away basically because I want the Remar nurses to get in there, get in the V2, start watching these lectures. I have a full lecture on many different topics. In the last section, you'll learn about management of care, legal issues. You'll also learn about... Um, your, your priorities, how to master NCLEX, all of that, all right? All of that, it's like concepts. So I just wanna take a second before I go, is there any questions about V2, the question bank, um, anything like that? I don't want to leave somebody that has a question about V2 or the question bank at all. Do you guys know how to, do you know how to create the test? Do you know how to, um, you know, look at the topics. Do you know how to make them optional or not optional? Ask me questions now about V2 or forever hold your peace. <laughs> or forever hold your peace. Uh, great question. The course is for next-gen NCLEX. It's also for those who are taking NCLEX now. However, if you are at this point testing for NCLEX, you need to get the V2. Um, you need to get the V2 because you never know what could happen and you may find yourself actually having to extend your day and actually take the next gen NCLEX. Anybody taking their NCLEX after April 1st will be getting the next gen NCLEX. Okay. All right. Um, do you have a two week program? Mm, I think it, my te my program can be modified. Can it be modified in two weeks? Two weeks is pushing it. You guys know I don't I don't suggest cramming for this exam. I, I would say um I would say it might put a lot of stress on you to try to finish my program in two weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks is I, and I have you studying five days a week. So you would have to literally be studying six or seven days a week to do it in four weeks. Okay. All right. Um, um, is there is there a replay? There's a replay on this. There will be. Yes, absolutely. Is there a live class or pre-recorded? So all of the videos in V2 are pre-recorded. They're there. They're available for you anytime that you want to study. The entire course is there, and you can go in. The, the reason why I created V2, and I know V2 is not for everybody. 
But the reason why I created V2 is because most of my nursing students are non-traditional. So that means they work, they have kids, they have, you know, a job. And so uh, the videos being pre-recorded and, and the course being there for them to study whenever they can is a huge benefit to them. Some people like to go to live classes and sit in class. And I think that's a great traditional way to learn. But I created the V2 for people that needed flexibility, but accountability too. Okay. Um, I'll see. How can I see? How can I see you have difficulty? Let me know how. That's why I'm on here now. How can I see all the grades I made in V2? So when you when you go to the V2 and you take an exam, once you take that exam and you pass it, you're able to view your test results. So if you, I don't know if I have any here um, that I can show you, you can view the test results. Let me see, <laughs> did I take this test already? You should be able to see those test results when you take an exam. So I didn't take that exam yet. Um, he says, I have the V2. When I do a test and need to go back, there is no continue on the test. It makes you start over again. Yeah, so if you have, you have to get a, a certain level to pass the V2, so it won't let you, but I think the, you know, in the, in the original program, you needed a 90 or 95% to pass. The V2 is a, is a 60%. So you have to make the 60% and the V2 will not let you proceed unless you make that 60%. So you may have to take the test over once or twice. It'll let you take it over again as many times as you need to, but you definitely have to get that minimum. You have to get that minimum. Okay. Um, yes. Can you go through how to create a test? I can. Absolutely. I will do that. What else? Thank you, four out of five. All right, I have the books, assessment, exam, if ready for exam. Yep, also that's there. I think honestly though, in the, in the Q bank, you have the easy, moderate or difficulty level questions. I'm going to say start in the moderate and see if you can do them. If you can do well on the difficult questions in the V2 question bank, I think that is a great, great assessment. And it'll tell you at the end of the test whether you are doing well or not. Uh, yeah, no, when you are done with the whole VT, it won't let you take it again. Yeah, so once you're done with an exam, once you pass a quiz for VT, uh, V2, it will not let you take that again. That is your performance because at the end of it, you're going to get a certificate that you can turn into the board of nursing to say, hey, I did this review course. It was so many hours. And you can use that for proof that you did the course. OK, love the case studies. What's the mobile app? The mobile app is being developed. Yeah, the mobile app is being developed. So it will be coming. I received. All right. Um, OK, so let me know. All right. Remarnurse.com is how you can sign up. Let me try to. I was actually looking for a quiz that was already taken because this is um, I'm in Mark's account and I don't think he took any of the quizzes. Yeah, he didn't take any of the quizzes. So let me show you in your course, you will have and I know that the writing on the screen is small, but in your course, Oh, here it is. So he did. So when you when you take a test and you pass a test, all right, you're able to review view your results once you pass it. And the V2 will show you, okay, these are the questions you got right. It will show you partial credit too. Okay. And it will also tell you what you got wrong as well but you won't be able to you won't be able to take that quiz again all right so that is where you get your results at inside of the lectures all right so that's the courses somebody said they just brought the v2 how do how do you use it 
So just really quickly, when you first log into your V2, what you're going to see is actually the 30 day challenge that I created. You're going to see the 30 day challenge. Now, the, let me just try going. So with the 30 day challenge, if you watch the getting started tutorials, it will explain to you how to use the V2. So you log into your V2, watch these videos. Okay. Watch these videos. And that will help you to feel more comfortable. The 30 day challenge are the videos that you can watch after every study session. Now, this is after you do the work. Don't start by watching these videos. What you're going to do is go to your NCLEX V2 review and not this first circle, but the second circle. OK, so when you download your workbook, you can go to this circle right here and you can begin to watch the lectures. The first lecture that you will watch is your pregnancy lecture. But again, this is once you have your workbook in front of you and your study calendar, because I don't want you guys just in the V2, just watching videos and things like that. I want you to be able to get in here, get in here. And then I want you to be able to have your calendar. OK, if you don't know where your calendar is, just check out your file vault. This is one thing about the V2. It is all inclusive. It has everything that you need. OK. All right. So if you go to your file vault, this is a registered nurse. You can get your study calendar and you can get your workbook right from the file vault. So even if you're like, hey, I didn't get the workbook. I don't know where to download it. I need my workbook. You can get your workbook right here. OK, you just click on the link. And it will um, click on the link. It's going to take you to your workbook. You just download the file right here. OK. All right. And then also, like I said, you can get your daily study calendar. The study calendar, you can download it. And the great thing about the V2. You can do this in four weeks. OK. If you wanted to do it in less than four weeks, you're going to have to study, do these study sessions uh, six days a week, I guess. All right. All right. So this is where you get the study calendar from. Um, if you don't know where the workbook is, go to your file vault. Again, registered nurse student workbook is right here. OK, and you can download it right here. That's it. It's all it's always here for you. It is always in there for you. So everybody should have their workbook. You should not have any reason why you don't have this workbook because it's already in the V2. OK. All right. OK. Any other questions? Any other questions about the V2? All right. Um, the trial version of the V2 is available. Somebody said, I'm trying to get the free version of the V2. Yes, you can also do the trial version. If you go to the website, remarnurse.com, you can do a trial of the V2 to see if you really like it. One thing I will say is that you will be able to watch the lectures and take some quizzes, but you won't have access to the question bank. All right, you won't have access to the question bank. So the purpose of the free trial is for you to experience the lectures and so forth like that. The question bank, just really quickly, to create a quiz on the question bank, um, you go to this button here that says create new test. And remember, you have to name your quizzes. OK, you want to name you have to name your quizzes. Because V2 will keep track of your test history. OK, so you go to create new test here. You go to create new test. And what's going to happen is the first thing you're going to need to do is put in a name for your quiz. So I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to name this Winning Wednesday. Winning Wednesday. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but you do have to name it. All right. Um, as far as why can't you pause the quiz, it's just not a feature. So once you leave or exit the exit the V2 quiz, if you're in the middle of exiting the V2 quiz, it is going to call it a wrap, all right? 
And so you want to make sure that if you're creating a quiz, you have enough time to complete those questions. So when I create a quiz, most of my quizzes are like 10 quiz, 10 questions, 15 questions, 20 questions, um, because I know that that's the amount of time that I have. Do you have study material for next gen? Yes, this is what it is. All right. This is the next gen NCLEX review. And so here you get to choose whether you want tutored or test or computer adaptive. Right. So we'll just do a tutor test real quick. Also, you get to choose um, the question pool if you want all the questions unanswered. Um, also, if you want easy, moderate or hard. A lot of different metrics here. And then you get to choose the subjects. Of course, under easy, we have 20 next gen case studies. We also um, under easy, we have 21 next gen items. And when you do moderate, you'll have more of all the different question types. Most of our most of our questions in the B2 are at a medium level. That was what I focused on. So you're able to to do that as well. All right. So easy, moderate, hard. You can select how many questions you want. Put in the quantity. Say we just want to do five, uh, not 54, five from all of the subjects. Or maybe you guys, I don't know, if you want to see the next gen. Let me show next gen. Most people like to see that. Let's do... Um, <laughs> Next gen case studies. Let's just do some of those so you can see them. And the questions will begin to populate all the case studies that you have, and you can put how many that you want to do. So let's do them untimed, and we can start our test. Okay. Can I print out the workbook? So it's creating our test. Can I print out the workbook so that I can write in it along for the videos? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can do that. Okay, so our test is completed. This is the case study screen. Remember with case studies in my V2, you do have the clickable tabs on the case studies. All right, um, and so you can read the presentation, read the ED notes, and we have the next gen question types. So this is a XY question, it's a rationale question, which means the patient has this condition as evidenced by one of these things that you read here. And so once you answer that, you can go to the next screen of your case study and it will say, identify three findings. So this is a select in that apply here and it will tell you um, the options that are correct here. Okay, and here, okay, then we move on. This is a select all that apply. Remember on next gen, you can still have some of the question types that we have now. Okay. Yep. This is just like next. This is just like the NCLEX. We worked really hard. And so this is a highlighting question. And so you have to highlight in the text what orders should be that should be prioritized. All right. So those of you who are preparing for next gen in CLEX, this is going to be really valuable for you to be able to get in there and begin to utilize the function and the technology of the new NCLEX. Okay. All right. And this is a drag and drop question. And this is a um, this is a, a a matrix question here that we have, and we are asking we are asking whether a patient's condition improved, declined, or was unchanged. Okay. So again. One of the main reasons why I converted from the VT to the V2 is because I really wanted to be able to offer you guys this technology for a reasonable price. If you guys see, there are very few NCLEX reviews right now that are able to offer you guys electronic health records in a question bank. 
Actually, I only know of two, two NCLEX reviews that have this technology. And the other one is charging hundreds of dollars for you to be able to practice these questions. So you have to, you have to see that there is a real value in being prepared for this exam. The NCLEX actually, the passing rates for NCLEX have been um, historically going down. And with next gen coming, with next gen coming, I am like, I'm on pins and needles waiting to see what this presentation will do to the passing rates. And um, hopefully we're all surprised and you guys do really, really well. You guys do extremely well on your NCLEX. That's the goal, right? That no matter how the questions are presented to you, you will be able to answer them. No matter what, it doesn't even matter. The, the, the nursing license can give you videos or pictures or whatever, case studies, and they go up. The passing rates may go up. So, but you will have to definitely be able to now read a great deal of information and be able to make sense. You have to be able to make sense of it. All right. And that's going to be up to you. Nobody's going to do that for you. All right. Nobody's going to do it. Nobody's going to, you know, they, they need to make it, they need to make it a little bit more realistic. And this is what you do as a nurse. You, you come in, you take a report and you have to be able to read a patient's information and make sense of it. Know when something is inappropriate. This is what you do. You click through a chart. This is part of your charting. You guys know if in nursing school you had to learn Epic, right? Or, or, or Cerner or something else. This is what that documentation looked like, didn't it? Did you admit the patient? Yes. Did you feed them? Yes. Did they ambulate? <laughs> and so doing these things in your studying time will help you feel so much more comfortable. So I say all that to say, guys, get in the V2. Get in the V2. You can do the trial version, but the paid version right now will give you access to the question bank and you can see how you really do. All right. Um, also, 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 it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me if you're studying for hours and hours and hours, okay? If you break your study session down to short focus times, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you're really putting 100% into that 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you're going to do and, and, and comprehend so much more than the person that's studying six hours a day, seven hours a day, and being distracted. So make the study sessions count like we did tonight. All right. We didn't study myasthenia gravis long and we covered a great deal of information about it. So use that and move forward with the rest of your week. I will see you guys soon. Remember, remember this. It's my favorite thing to say. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. You got questions? Text me directly the word NCLEX. 855-696-0132, okay? Yes, you can go to the question bank first. You can go straight to the question bank. You can give V2, go straight to the question bank if you want to. If that's your thing, you can do it. It's there for you guys. All right, thank you guys for studying with me. Later.